In this demonstration, we will look at the dehydration of ethanol to ethene, which is either a teacher demo or a student practical. Dehydration is the removal of the elements of water, not the removal of water. Glass wool or mineral wool is used as a reservoir for the ethanol. Because the tube has to be tilted on its side, you can't simply pour the ethanol in. The catalyst in this reaction is aluminium oxide. Now we're using aluminium oxide powder here, which you will need to slide in once the tube is clamped. You can use broken porcelain pots, the sort that you might use for evaporation in salt preps instead. That's a bit easier for the students to manipulate. When clamping up the tube, you need to clamp the tube as close to the end of the tube as possible. You will need to watch out for small cracks in the tube itself, as we didn't do here. And if the students are doing it, they'll need to make sure that they're using a clamp that has full cork coverings, or at least rubber coverings, on all three prongs. Otherwise, over-tightening can shatter the tube. The delivery tube is then placed into a trough of water in which several tubes for collection of the ethene gas are already submersed along with their bungs. So using a suitable Bunsen burner with a long lead or a portable Bunsen as I'm doing here, heat the aluminium oxide strongly. Because it's in the middle of the tube there shouldn't be any chance of charring the clamp stand coverings. And once you think the aluminium oxide is hot enough, just simply transfer a flick of the flame over to the ethanol to heat it up. The ethanol vapour should come in contact with the catalyst and dehydrate, forming the ethene gas. Note the first few bubbles that come through the delivery tube will be oxygen as you're expanding the air in the tube on heating. Collect the gas by the downward displacement of water. Stop at the tube and collect as many as you can, as we're using boiling tubes here rather than test tubes. We're not going to collect as many as you would. Note that once you've stopped heating, you get a situation called suck back if you don't remove the delivery tube away from the water source. On cooling the initial boiling tube, water will come up the tube to take the place of the contracted air cold water and glass causes cracks and sometimes can cause the tubes to shatter. The students should be aware of this. A simple remedy is to take the tube out of the water. It's easier to collect the gas if you've got a second pair of hands to assist. Let's look at the three expected tests for ethene gas. Its reaction with bromine water, its reaction with acidified potassium manganate 7 and combustion. We'll take each in turn. Bromine water, as you can see, is an orange coloured solution. It's not the same as bromine. To make bromine water, your technical staff will have put a few drops of bromine into contact with water and let it diffuse. It sets up an equilibrium, forming HOBr and HBr. It's the HOBr that's the reactant part of this test. The bromine water should be very dilute and you should just add a few drops of bromine. Now here we're using a boiling tube of the gas so we can add a few squirts and with shaking you should see that we've got a colour change from orange to colourless. With the test for potassium manganate 7 there are a couple of errors that you could do to not show the desired effect. You could make the potassium manganate 7 far too concentrated and you can use too much. We've done both in this example. A dilute solution of acidified, acidified with sulfuric acid, not hydrochloric, potassium manganate 7 should go from purple to colourless as you oxidise the ethene to ethan-1,2-diol. The combustion of ethene is a nice one. You just need to remember that ethene gas is lighter than air, so you need to be able to burn it with the open part of the tube facing downwards and if you have facility to turn the lights off you can get the flame to chase itself to the bottom of the tube. It's quite pretty really.
As with all experiments, these are subject to local conditions of health and safety. If in doubt as to what they are, please consult your local sources.